Here's what happens in Titanic. In case you forgot, it's terrible. It starts out on a modern time submarine. Two and a half miles down. Bill Paxton is snooping around on the ocean floor, trying to find a big necklace to impress Britney Spears. His character is clearly James Cameron's idea of what a cool person is like. He does stuff like wear male earrings and say, Sayonara, in a sarcastic voice. Oh yeah, pretty cool. Bill Paxton finds this old safe in the ocean, expecting it to be full of Titanic jewels, but instead it's just an old doodle of some boobs. Total rip-off. Or is it? An old lady recognises her boob doodle on the news and goes to visit Bill Paxton on his rock and roll treasure boat, where they make her watch a graphic CGI reenactment of the Titanic sinking. I believe the working title is, Hey Granny, fuck your PTSD. Then she tells her story, which is not pertinent to treasure hunting. Unless by treasure you mean three hours of nonsense, garbage, terror, death, and delightful Italian stereotypes. I go to America! No, mate. Turns out the old lady used to be Kate Winslet. And one time she rode a big boat named Titanic, but she wasn't too happy about it. To me, it was a slave ship taking me back to America in chains. Because imprisonment, rape, and unpaid forced labor is just like having to marry Billy Zane and live in a fur lined bonbon palace for literally ever. Also, it's 1912 right now, which means that real slavery has only been over for like 40 years. Maybe a little too soon for flippant slavery metaphors? She continues. I saw my whole life as if I'd already lived it. An endless parade of parties and cotillions, yachts and polo matches. Nobody notices me. Everyone is so fake. My polo pony is the wrong colour. As you can see, Kate Winslet's life is just like slavery. She decides to kill herself immediately. Luckily, along comes Leonardo, I'm definitely wearing lipstick, DiCaprio, who is travelling to America with his friends Fabrizio, human oh Olive Garden gosh. commercial, and Tommy, five leprechauns standing on each other's shoulders wearing a long coat. Leonardo DiCaprio rescues her from suicide and she repays him by letting her entire family treat him like human feces for the last few days of his life. Then they fall in love. Leonardo shows up at fancy dinner, even though he is a stinky paw and Kate Winslet's mum hates him. My mother looked at him like an insect. After dinner, Leonardo says, Time for me to go row with the other slaves. Again, with the slave thing. You guys are not slaves. Please read a book. It's the Celine Dion part, the boob sketching part, and the jollopy banging part. All of it is incredibly awkward and boring. Then Theoden, King of Rohan, drives the boat into a big iceberg. And then the ocean starts coming inside the boat. Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio run around the boat in circles for a long time, holding hands. Fabrizio shows up, finally, to tell them that they're all fucked because all the lifeboats are gone. Then he drowns. Oops. Fortunately for Kate Winslet, Leonardo DiCaprio turns out to be the world's number one expert in surviving ocean liner disasters, offering genius advice like... We have to stay on the ship as long as possible, come on! Eventually, though, they end up in the ocean, where Kate Winslet sits on a board and cries. Leonardo makes one attempt to get on the board with her, but falls off. So he decides to die instead. Jack. Kate Winslet is sad. There's a boy, Jack. Then she gets rescued by oh. Mr. Fantastic from the Fantastic Four movie. Finally. Even though she knew Bill Paxton was searching for the necklace and he patiently listened to her stupid story, the old lady just goes and drops it into the ocean at the end. Like, seriously, old lady? First of all, you're a dick. Second of all, the necklace belongs in a museum. Third of all, you're a dick. Then, to wrap things up, there's a dream sequence where the ghosts of Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio walk down the Titanic's grand staircase and everyone on Earth applauds for no reason. You know we're the only people who think the world owes them a round of applause? Fifteen-year-old girls and billionaire directors who own submarines. I rest my case. <laughs>